In this lab, we're poisoning the cache via the unkeyed query parameter UTM content. And I'll show you how you can find this parameter with ParamMiner. And I'll explain why this UTM content parameter is often found to be unkeyed and why it's a parameter you should always look out for when probing for web cache poisoning. So let's switch to burp and go to proxy and HTTP history. And we want the get request for the homepage here, send it to repeater and then switch to repeater. And I'm going to send this request because the question we want answered is, is this homepage a cache oracle? And we can see that it is because of these three headers. It's given away caching related information. So we see that we hit the cache. The age of the cached response is 11 seconds. And the max age for this cached response is 35 seconds, after which it will expire. So that answers the question. It is a cache oracle, and we can continue to use the home page for our probing. Now let's try adding a cache buster in the query string. So I'm going to go here and add a cache buster, value cache buster, and then some random input, and send the request again. Just wait for the response. We get a cache miss. Let's send the request again so we can confirm that we have a cache hit. And then let's modify the cache buster here and send the request again. And this time, we get a cache miss. So that confirms that the query string is part of the cache key and that we can safely segment away the probing that we're doing from actual end users that are browsing the home page uh, without interfering with them. Now, one interesting thing I see here is when we search for whatever we had here in the cache buster in the response, we can see that it's reflected in the response. And we can likely inject JavaScript here. And, and we'll try to do that. But it's actually going to be quite useless because the query string is part of the cache key. We'd only be infecting our own version or poisoning the cache for our own version with our own cache buster. But we'll do it anyway because it'll be a nice follow up when, once we find the UTM content query parameter. So let's see if we want to exit the context there, we want a single quotation mark and then exit it, the tag, and then add a script tag, say an alert pop up one, and then close the script tags. So let's send that request. And then we can see that it's reflected in the response. So if we were to request this in the browser in the original session, let's just copy this and then go here and paste the URL, then we get to see the pop up. But this pop up will only be visible for someone who is actually using our version of the cache buster. So it might be valid as a reflected XSS if you can send it to your victim in a phishing attempt. But otherwise, this is pretty useless because it doesn't affect the normal front page. But if we were to find a unkeyed query parameter, then things would be different because that query parameter wouldn't be part of the cache key. So we can put that here, that query parameter, and then we can keep our script tag here the same. That would still likely be reflected in the response. And that we, then we'd have a successful XSS for the actual home page without a cache buster. So let's try doing that. So if we right click and then go to extensions, param miner, guess params, and then click guess get parameters, we can leave the defaults and then click OK to search for those. I'm going to click on cancel because I've already ran the search. Under both the community edition and the professional edition, you can find the results under extensions and then go to param miner and to output. And you can see here that the scam has uh, the, <laughs> the scam, the scan has completed. And we can find the UTM content query parameter here that was identified by ParamMiner. So let's copy this query parameter UTM content and then go back to repeater. And then here in the request line, instead of the query parameter name CB, let's just use UTM content instead and leave everything else the same. And then we're just going to send this request. And unfortunately, we have a cache hit already because likely the victim was browsing the site, the homepage in the background. So the homepage was already cached. So we just have to wait for this age to expire to hit 35 seconds. And then we'll try to repoison the home page with our request here. So when it hits 35 seconds, we just have to make sure we send loads of requests. There we go, nearly there. And there we go, let's send this. And now we can see here that we are using the UTM content query parameter, the cache buster value, and we have our script tags injected. And now if we go back to the front page, we've already solved the lab because if we refresh the page, the lab is a bit slow, but hopefully it'll load and then you'll see that we get the alert pop up. There we go. We got the alert pop up. Now you might be wondering why was this random query parameter UTM underscore content removed from the cache key? And the answer is usually performance. So it's important to know UTM stands for urchin tracking module. <laughs> well, I don't actually know if it's important to know that, but it's important to know that it's 
part of Google Analytics. It's part of tracking and analytics. So when a company, for example, is releasing an amazing fitness product, they might send out a marketing email for that. So they'll set the UTM medium to email, for example, or marketing email one. But then within that marketing email, they might have different uh, paragraphs and they set a link to this page, amazing fitness product in every paragraph. And at the end, there might be a banner, like a call to action for people to click on. So every separate link in that marketing email will have a different UTM content value within for the same link. So what you end up with is a link to the same page, but with dozens of varieties of UTM content. For the caching server, if it's part of the cache key, that means for that amazing fitness product page, the caching server has to keep a store of every response for every variation of UTM content. So an administrator managing that caching server might see from their, uh, from their own monitoring that it's killing their performance of their caching server. So they might decide to remove that cache or remove the UTM content query parameter from the cache key. So that's why UTM content itself and any of the parameters you see here it's often good to look for those when you're testing for web cache poisoning. I hope this was helpful to you, and thank you for watching.